Yeah. Uh, we are recording this part of the meeting. Uh, I hope there's no objections about that. You will understand soon why we are recording this part of the meeting. Okay. So, um, uh, as 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 uh, many of you have recognized, Eric was not able to join us uh, in person this year. Um, he's had some um, health challenges, and uh, we hope that he will again be with us. Um, but um, it was uh, discussed at the executive committee. Um, we've not, uh, to my knowledge, previously had honorary members. Um, and uh, the suggestion was made to um, elect Eric as an honorary member, um, an honorary lifetime member of the society. Uh, and uh, that nomination was accomplished in the executive committee. Um, so he is indeed nominated as a lifetime honorary member of the society. Um, what I, I'd like to do is, um, is I would like to share um, some information that um, I learned about Eric as we were uh, discussing this. So um, bear with me for the next uh, couple of minutes, I hope, and, and I apologize for any mispronunciations, which I will inevitably make. Um, so um, this is, this is uh, our, our justification if you will, for um, Eric's lifetime honorary membership. Um, how does one describe the accomplishments and contributions of Eric Hoffnagel in a few minutes? In researching Eric's contributions, I was amazed by the depth and scope of Eric's work over the years. I think it's impossible to do justice to Eric's accomplishments in the next few minutes, though I will do my best. The basic facts of Eric's career are that Eric was born in Copenhagen and holds a master's in science and a PhD in psychology. Uh, Professor Hoffnagel's scope of work includes system management and performance, system safety, resilient healthcare, resilience engineering, human reliability analysis, cognitive systems engineering, and intelligent man-made systems. He's the author of more than 500 publications, including 28 books, articles, conference papers, and reports. Eric is the founding editor of the International Journal of Cognition, Technology and Work, where he also served as one of the first two editors-in-chief for the first 10 years of the journal. He's a member of multiple editorial boards, including Safety Science, Theoretical Issues in Ergonomic Science, uh, IEA Journal of Ergonomics Research, the International Journal of Virtual Technology and Multimedia, and the Advisory Board of Cognitive Science Quarterly. He's developed or co-developed such concepts as FRAM, RAG, which is now SPM, ETO, Safety 1 and Safety 2. Um, I learned, uh, interestingly, that the term macrocognition is reported to have been coined by Pietro Cachabu and Eric Hoffnagel in 1995. Uh, Eric's expertise has been sought for such diverse undertakings as the Scientific Committee of the Sethar Joint Undertaking, the Risk Commission of the Danish Academy of Technical Sciences, a uh, representative in the Council of the Association of Computing Machinery and president of the European Association of Cognitive Ergonomics and the Swedish Reactor Safety Council. Uh, Eric has contributed to safety and organizational management in a wide range of socio-technical systems, including healthcare, offshore oil drilling, marine industry, commercial airlines, air traffic control, railways, nuclear industry, aerospace development and information networks. And of course, Eric is the co-founder and past president of the Resilience Engineering Association and co-founder of our own Resilient Healthcare Society. Uh, Professor Hoffnagel's current and past uh, academic affiliations are, are really too numerous to list, but they, as a highlight, they include the Institute of Resilient Systems in Seoul, South Korea, Macquarie, uh, Technische Universität, uh, Germany, Linköping University in Sweden, University of Jönköping in Sweden, uh, the Central Queensland University, University of Southern Denmark, the Center for Quality Improvement, uh, Region of Southern Denmark, the Chair at uh, Mies, Paris Tech, uh, Principal Advisor to the Helden React Reactor Project in Helden, Norway, the University of Copenhagen, uh, the Head of the Man-Made Interaction Research Division of the Helden Reactor Project, Lisa National Laboratory, and the University of Aarhus in Denmark. Um, 
I would like to share two memories of individuals who met Eric at early stages of their careers and uh, their recollections demonstrate why Eric's uh, influence has been so profound. So from Siri Wig, um, Siri said she first listened to Eric on a keynote he held at the Working on Safety Conference in the Netherlands in 2006. Uh, Siri was a PhD candidate and she said she was thrilled to listen to his talk about safety barriers. And then she realized she wanted to learn more from Eric and signed up for one of the first, maybe the first resilience engineering seminar he organized at Means uh, in 2008. And while attending the seminar, she understood how he was able to create an informal atmosphere where people who dare to speak up and discuss, and that he wanted to listen and have a good time. The size of the seminar was similar to ours. And after that, she said, I think this is his success formula for networking because people keep returning and spread the word about how he creates the safety or resilience family. He likes good food, uh, drinks, and is interested in talking to people no matter if they are high profile professors or juniors. Uh, Siri says for me, he's a role model and this soft aspect makes such an international high profile researcher very human and down to earth. This is why people like so much being around him and learning from him. Um, and from Robin Clay Williams, um, Robin says that she first met Eric at the Australian Aviation Psychology Conference in Australia in 2008 where he introduced uh, uh, resilience engineering. Um, that was before there was resilient healthcare. Um, Robin says she was a PhD student at the time, impressed with his level of expertise, but also his self-deprecating sense of humor. He was always been very generous with students at all levels, willing to patiently explain the concepts and answering even the most stupid questions. His ability to synthesize ideas from a variety of fields to extract the key learnings is extraordinary. It is a privilege to have Eric as a colleague. And um, you also mentioned um, Eric's uh, family life. Um, and this is uh, from Axel. Uh, besides his exceptional academic career and achievements and possibly to a high degree contributing to them, Eric has wide and deep interest in many things outside of the safety sector. He's not only a productive author, he also reads tremendous numbers of books, history, novels, biographies, and more, as well as papers and journals. His mother was a concert pianist, and perhaps in part due to that influence, he loves and knows a lot about classical music and art, and he is a sailor. I think many of us uh, benefited from that in, in our visit to Denmark uh, some years ago. Um, he also sews his own curtains. He's a loving father of four daughters and has a large family with grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And with his Danish and Japanese background, all his international experiences and contacts and his interests, Eric is a true humanist, globetrotter, and a Renaissance person. So there is so much more I and I'm sure all of us could say here. And I will suffice to say that if not for Eric, it is unlikely that all of us would be together at this conference sharing ideas and working to advance our understanding of, of the field of resilient healthcare. Professor Hoffnagel, we are immensely grateful to you for your contributions and your willingness to espouse controversial theories when few others would. We honor you and your accomplishments. So as I mentioned, um, Eric has been nominated by the executive committee for this honorary membership. Um, may we have a second? And okay. I think we have um, Ellen, uh, David, and Andrew seconding. Um, so um, may we have a show of hands for support for this nomination? I believe that's unanimous. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and... I think next up, 